to our, our text this morning brings us to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. And it says verses 1 through 16. We're going to go to verses 1 through 17. And we, all just, we just thank y'all for inviting us. It's, um, I heard somebody say, make yourself at home this morning. So we thank you that you're allowing us to make ourselves at home. <laughs> Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are, Lord God. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives, Lord God. Father, now I ask that you would move Angela Carter out of the way this morning, Lord God, and that you would use me as your servant this morning, Lord God, to bring in on time, Lord, this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So our text this morning is Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 17. And it reads like this. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he left the captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascend mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is, very, is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be in fans, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head that is Christ. From him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their thinking. Thank you for the hearing and reading of God's holy word. Amen. And so we got we, we have this text, and we have Paul who has written. Um, Paul is addressing the problem between the Jewish and the Gentile Christians. Um, the tension, um, there was tension in the, uh, in the in the region at that time, and they were split, they were threatening to split up the Christians into groups and to destroy the unity of the church. We kind of have that now, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> we have tensions outside and, and things that are trying to destroy us from being united as Christians, right? We have denominations that, I mean, some people won't even step into other people's church. That's that's hard to believe. Because we're the body of Christ, right? And we're called to love one another. We're called to love even when we don't like what somebody's doing or what they're saying. Or we're supposed to turn the other cheek. Isn't that what the word says? Uh, you know, I had to think about that one. I had to think about that. Uh, Lord, you asked me to turn the other cheek. And they're, they're going to hit me here and i got to turn my cheek and get hit over here too? I mean, like, how am I supposed to do that? You know, but it's, the, it's, through, it's through the Holy Spirit that we do these things, right? It's through the Holy Spirit that keeps 
were sitting in the back um, trying to come up with the church service, and we just kept talking about unity, and then we talked about making marriage, and I was just like, well, let's just put that together, and we'll see what God does, right? <laughs> and so unity and breaking barriers, I've just been thinking about this over the, the, the past month or so. Unity and breaking barriers. And so it brought me to Ephesians, and it brought me to Paul's letter, and it brought me um, to Paul telling us that we have spiritual gifts that the Lord has left with us, right? First, I thought about how Jesus was a barrier. He was a barrier breaker, right? He would go in, and, and how did Jesus do that? Anybody know how Jesus broke barriers? He accepted the unacceptable. He accepted the unacceptable. Amen. What else did Jesus do to break barriers? I mean, like, folks had their own mindset, right? They, 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 they were like, no, that they had their rules and regulations and we don't step outside of this, right? <laughs> but Jesus would come in and, and he would accept people that were unacceptable. And he would love people that were probably unlovable for some folks, but for Jesus, he, he just loved them. He just stepped in. He was a barrier breaker. And, 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 and in, this, in, this, in this Ephesians, the, the um, Paul is telling us that, that it's the unity by the unity of the bond of peace. But where does our peace come from? Peace doesn't come from our own thoughts. It doesn't come from, from, from uh, I just want to be, I want to be friends with you. We have the ability to do that. But, but when you hook up with the Holy Spirit and it allows you to connect with people that you're not sure of, that you don't know who they are or what they're doing, or even the folks that you know what they're doing, and you're like, I don't want to be around that. But you've got to be around that. Because that is what God is calling us to do, right? So in Ephesians, um, let me go down. In Ephesians, it says, uh, It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, and some to be teachers. Jesus was the greatest teacher. When he had an issue, he didn't just solve the problem all the time. He gave them some teaching, right? He, he, he went up to the mountain, uh, uh, he went up to the mountain and he sat and he gave them the attitudes, right? They were a bunch of people sitting out in the field and they were standing out in the field with him and, and, and they were listening to what he was saying and they were trying to fix in their minds like, okay, what's going on? Some of them were there not for good reasons and some of them were there for good reasons and they wanted to learn and they wanted to be understanding what he was saying. But they knew something was different about him. They knew something was different about him. These gifts and things that God has called us to as the body of Christ. Some of us are teachers in the audience. Some of us are pastors. Some of us are evangelists. And the list goes on and on the things that God has called us all to do. Do I have any witnesses? Some folks, sometimes it's not easy to do the things that God is calling us to do. Is that the truth? That's I don't true. know about you, but I have a hard time doing what God called me to do. Sometimes. <laughs> I wasn't, I was a quiet kid, very quiet, and I let a lot of things happen. But God, right? But God gives us the ability to do what he's calling us to do. So if I go down to the 17th verse, and I couldn't help but not stop at 16, I had to go to 17. When I got to verse 17, let me find it here. So I tell you this, and insist it in the Lord that you must no longer live as Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. And it goes on to say they are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. I had to think about like a lot of things that happen to us are stuck in our minds, our mindset. We have old mindsets. Or we have things that have taught us and we're so stern and so easy to hold on to those things. But when you get God's word and you start reading it and it starts cycling through, it starts to ease up some of those mindsets. And if God is telling you to be a preacher or if he's telling you to be an evangelist, you you just have to you just have to read his word and, and like David say, hey Lord, I need your help. I need you to show me how to do this. I, 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 I'm reading your word and, and I'm asking you questions. And I'm in relationship with you. Because we need a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. I didn't realize when I started doing the invitation in my church, you know, some, some people do their invitation a different way. But I kept going to personal relationship with Jesus Christ. 
Christ. And I was like, nobody else is saying a personal relationship with Jesus Christ on the invitation. But what's going on with me, Lord? But the Lord kept leading me that way. And I was in the church for 30-something uh, years before I realized I needed a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I didn't just need to come in dressed up. I didn't just need to come in and, and sit with my grandma or my mom. I needed to know him for myself. At that point in my life, my life was falling apart and I did not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I didn't know I had gifts that were locked away inside of me. I didn't know I could speak. I didn't know that I could run around the church. I didn't know that God makes all of these colors and all of these beautiful sceneries and all of these things. I didn't know that when I was 30-something years old. And I was a little bit upset finding out that I missed out on some stuff, right? <laughs> I had missed out on how beautiful and how magnificent, how marvelous, and how God could tear down barriers. He could, and, and it wasn't just the barriers. I built my own barriers. I had barriers in my mind that said that that they said that I wasn't fearfully and wonderfully made. My barriers said that I don't like the way I look. I don't like the way I speak. I don't like who I am. Those are the barriers that I have. But God, but God in his word, but God in, in that personal relationship, because when I needed him so much, and I fell out in the middle of my floor, and I said, God, help me. Boy, did I didn't know what I was saying. Because he came out of the woodworks, right? He didn't just come, you know, uh, I was on the street somewhere or somewhere and somebody would say something to me and it would be like, I didn't know I asked for the true and living God. I always tell my church, I said, you know what, I wanted to see the God who rolled the, the waters back and then I could see the, the seashells on the floor as those Israelites went through and they saw the seashells on that floor. And, 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 and they were being chased. And those waters receding on each side. Man, you can believe that, right? <laughs> and I wanted to see that kind of guy. Not the one who passes by in church sometimes. We, we, we do this. We pass by in church sometimes. And we just say a few words. But man, I need to know, how did you make it over? And how did you make it out of your situation? And how did you love somebody who wasn't lovable? And how did you get to use your gifts? That's the kind of questions I wanted to know. And God was beginning to show me something different than what I was used to every Sunday. Or, or I always had a, a lot of faith. But I, when I read, read the Word, He gives people a measure of faith, right? And He gave me a big measure of faith, but I still didn't have a personal relationship with Him. So I was missing a big part of who He was. So unity begins in our minds first. It begins in our minds with God's word. When you got down to that verse 17, it says, Futility. So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. And futility means pointlessness or uselessness. Is there anybody in this room that's useless or pointless? No, right? Like, we're like a puzzle piece in an amazing, beautiful picture. And when we all get together, I'm so thankful that you invited us today. Because when we all get together, we get to get outside of our normal, right? When somebody says we're going to do something different, I'm like, I'm going. <laughs> I want to be there. Because I know that it's going to show me that the God that's, that's out there is going to give me something greater to work. It's going to push me in a different direction. It's going to help me get closer to God and realize that He's everywhere. Right? He's in us, over us, and through us. He's everywhere. You can see Him at the hospital. You can see Him at the, at the schools. You can see Him in the sunshine outside. You can see Him at the beach. But he's everywhere. He's not a little big boxed up God. He's this great big amazing God. And anything that we have, he can help us get through it. And 
and he uses us, right? The body of Christ to bring a word or a hug or, or, or a link to somebody. I tell them, you know, I, I, I might be a little older, but I still need a link to say that you're going to be all right. You can do this. <laughs> I don't know anybody's mom used to wink at them. And be like, ooh, thank God my mom's in the audience and she's winking at me. Or thank God Sister Sally's over there winking at me. Man, I needed that today because, I, all right, I can do it because she's encouraging me, right? The church encourages, the church uplifts, the church builds up, the church doesn't tear down folks, the church is unified in that way. Amen? Amen. So when I was thinking of the futility of the mind, I, I thought about some things that we do that, that are barrier breakers. I don't know for you, money sometimes is a barrier breaker. Media can be a barrier breaker. Um, our work, our jobs can be barrier breakers. Because we're always thinking about, oh my goodness, we got to get to work. Or, oh my goodness, we, we don't have enough to what we need in our house. Or, or, or unbelief can be a barrier breaker. Religion can be a barrier breaker. Um, addiction can be a barrier breaker. But we serve a God that can take care of all those barriers, right? He left the Holy Spirit to help us, to teach us to continue on what Jesus did after he came off of that cross. After he got with his disciples and he taught them as long as he could. He said, look, I'm not going to be here long. I, I got a destination I'm reaching. I got to get there. I need y'all to pay attention and hold it and, 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 and get with me and listen to me because y'all are going to be the ones that are carrying on. I'm going to leave you something to help you. But we got to carry on this church, right? We got to carry on the body of Christ. But he was teaching. Jesus continued to teach. So those barriers and things that um, that we have going on in our mind. The Romans 12 and 1 and 2 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies, my goodness, as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. And verse 2, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. That, that's, what we're, that's what we're here for, right? That's what we're here for. We're living sacrifices. But God loves us so much, right? He knows the very hairs on our head. He knows the thoughts that we're thinking. He knows the things that we've been through. He knows where we're, what, what he's destined us to be. And so it's not as hard as it appears to be. But the world is trying to transform us into what the world is trying to transform us into. So as you think about this, your week, your month, your year, forever, <laughs> unity and breaking barriers. God is able to break the barriers in your mind, in your life. He's here to give us life and life more abundantly. I love that one. Life and life more abundantly. That means I don't got to be all, I can just be however I want to be, right? Not, not, not really, but I, I can, I, you know, within the, within the, within the, the, the parameters, right? But it's, it's a free thing, right? We are free in Christ. So again, I thank you all for inviting us here. I always tell them when I, I tell them when I do the invitation. Again, it is first thing I'm offering a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, not not religion, but relationship with Jesus Christ. It's a simple thing. Romans 10, 10 and 9 says, usually it takes me a little longer to get my text together and be transparent. Romans 10 and 9 says that if you that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it's with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it's with your mouth that you confess and are saved. It's a simple thing. You just need to say it with your mouth, right? It's a prayer that you can pray with anybody, anytime, anywhere. 
as the Holy Spirit leads you. So I'm offering that today, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The second invitation is there's no perfect church. Beulah's not perfect, are we? <laughs> no. <laughs> are y'all perfect? No, no perfect church here. We just check it because I, you know, I always say that, but I want to make sure that, I, that we make y'all perfect and we, you know, I, I just want to make sure. But there is no perfect church, right? <laughs>
that's the kind of guy that he is. He don't want to leave no stone unturned before we leave here. It starts right now. So after we do a few looks, y'all don't mind if we just get together in a circle in the middle of 